everybody. I'm so sorry that we're late, uh, but we're going to be starting soon. And I will just wait until a couple more people log in. So let's get started, shall we? I'm so sorry that we were a little bit late. We had a little bit of technical issues. Can everyone see me and hear me? Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through how to get your Instagram together and how can you try and inspire yourself to create more content. Um, I have a handy, workbook so if you have any questions afterwards please um, give me a follow on Instagram I'll put my handle at the end um, and what we can do is then kind of show you the workbook two seconds okay fantastic okay are we all ready to get started fantastic let's go through now we're going to go through can everyone see my screen Brilliant. Let's go through just a quick background in who I am and what I do. So my name is Freya and I'm the CEO and founder of Digital Ad Doctor. And what I do is I help brands be found online. And I've been doing that across Dubai and the UK, uh, mainly in the fashion and lifestyle industry. And I'm also a DMI qualified instructor. So what that means is that I can teach you how to do uh, digital media or how to do social media yourself and how can you um, make sure that everything works in the right way to hit your end goals. So let's go through some kind of housekeeping rules or housekeeping areas um, just so everyone's all on the same page before we go into how do you create more content or how do you make your wall look good um, and we're going to go into insights later on. So let's go through the first kind of stage of what Instagram is. So Instagram is a visual platform and it helps you share the highlights of your day um, and it helps you uh, or it helps the community um, have an insight into what your world is like and that's fundamentally what Instagram is here to facilitate. Um, and it's an amazing platform because you can use it in so many different ways. Now, it's really great that we're doing the presentation now because essentially we have so many different mediums that you can use within Instagram. So you have Instagram, um, photo, carousel and video, which will be your main kind of component that you would see here. Um, you also have stories which you can produce. And the best practice for stories is to share behind the scene actions in what you're doing for your day to day job or to share um, top tips or FAQs. Um, and the rule of thumb for stories is to echo what you do on your wall. Now, what I mean by that is the Instagram kind of put across their flagship um like how this algorithm works but they suggest that if you can post every day um it will keep the the algorithm kind of happy with the content that you have in terms of stories they kind of say that if you can post between five to six times a day it will really help keep your engagement levels higher we also have filters so you can create your own personalized filter and have that access within your platform and we have lives as well. Um, according to the algorithm, it's best practice, if you can, to have a live every single month. And the reason why is, you know, a lot of people are in lockdown at the moment. So if you can bring that personalized approach to your Instagram and bring people into your ecosystem where they could ask questions about uh, like food recipes or they can ask questions about how do you sell that product or how do you package that product, for example, then you can do a live where you can show people how you do that. Or you could do a live where you do a testimonial session with your clients and they can really sing your accolades on what you do as a business entity. We have a IGTV, 
which is a long form content where you can put up video um, assets and have that playable within your platform. And we have Reels, which is a new kind of Instagram baby, uh, which is essentially a kind of, uh, if you put it like this, it's like a TikTok hybrid. Um, and what you can do then is share a quick um, how to do something. So how to do a hair braid, for example, or like I've done, for example, like how to find your insights, insights in Instagram. And I'll give you a quick tip. So within Reels, if you want to increase your views, um, if you set up a Pinterest account on business, you can copy your URL um, ID from Reels and then post it in your Pinterest um, account. And what that would do is transfer the, uh, the traffic across to both channels. So that's quite exciting what you can do in that side. And you also then have guides, which is how do you set up like a little lookbook um, on Instagram and how that works. If you don't have that available on your platform, what you can then do is go to someone that has guides available, like Instagram, for example, and then that will be available for you. Um, so we have Reels as well. Um, so Reels um, is semi-available in the UAE. From, uh, in terms of the, the updates and release, it looks like it will be fully available March of this year, you can see um, like UK and US real examples, and then you can use that to uh, prepare yourself in the future. Um, does that answer everyone's questions so far? Perfect. Okay, so what you'll notice as well as in this presentation is there's a little camera emoji down here. So if you wanna take any screenshots, um, this is also the kind of area that we'll talk through. So we have some lingo as well, which I think will be really good for us to go through. So you have your home feed, you have engagements, you have username, you have obviously a block and a mention, um, and you have your followers. Um, so these are the types of terms and these are the metrics that you should be looking at. Um, and we'll go through more on what insights you need to see in terms of Instagram and how it all works. Um, and then you can kind of look at areas that you want to look at more in more refined details. We'll go through this later on, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware um, of all the different aspects that you have within Google and uh, within Instagram. Okay, and then we have um, the types of profiles that you have. So we have essentially three different areas. So you have your, your public, um, private, and verified. So in terms of public, it just means that everyone can review or view your platforms. Um, private just means that it's a closed community. So the only people that can see your content or post are people that you've accepted for them to follow you. And then you have verified. So verified is a process that you have to go through to prove to Instagram that you're that authentic user. Um, and it typically takes around 50 to 60 days for the verification to come across. Um, and please know that you don't have to typically pay um, Instagram for this verification it's all based on um, the amount of articles that would be about you um, and also your following and your business trade license or your how you can validate who you are and then we have types so you have your personal and you have your business type um, so we have these different two areas um, and you can also then kind of move everything across so my rule of thumb for this really to start with is um, just to, please make sure that you opt for a business account so you can see the insights and analytics um, and that can help you plan for more content. And this kind of does the comparison of both. So within a business account, you can have ad assets, but you can also have these really cool options of contact info and you can have a call to action button, um, which then helps people um, make contact with your business. And then this is what I was talking about earlier on. Um, so this is how Instagram algorithm works in terms of this year, for example. Um, and these are the key factors that influence how the Instagram algorithm works. Does this all make sense so far? Okay. 
So let me answer some questions. I seem to have lost the presentation. Two seconds. Yes, so you can move your page from a personal to a business. Um, if you need any help with that, um, please let me know and I can uh, connect with you afterwards and put that across. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. Go back into it. Two seconds. Okay, dokie. Okay, so let's go through these ranking factors and how the algorithm works. Um, and then hopefully we won't have any more technical problems. <laughs> That's the key. So the area here um, is interest. So what Instagram likes to do is show you content that you're interested in, and it will start working in a in a in a kind of hybrid way to show you what other accounts that you've liked or what other relationships you've liked um, that content they've also liked as well so just so everyone's aware the the instagram feed doesn't work in a chronological way it works in a way based on interest um, so that's why you might see posts from someone if they posted um let's say like three days ago but that content now gets a lot more likes you might see that blended in your feed first um, and this goes down into usage so if you're a hybrid or like a high intense user um, and you go into instagram let's say 10 to 20 times in four hours you will actually have a higher usage than someone that just logs in every single day and you can see that within your business analytics of um, top times that you should post or top days that you should post and that's how you can kind of help yourself look through the content and try and see what more con or what other content could you put out there in terms of the relationship as well what it also looks at is um how much you engage with particular profiles and how those profiles would help you um save content or as well as share content via whatsapp or other platforms and that's how it kind of looks in more of a blended approach but these are mainly the six areas that Instagram looks at in terms of your algorithm updates but this is a kind of rule of thumb on how you can kind of look and make your content work. In terms of the Instagram ecosystem for example let's say you post a post um, does anyone know how long that post will last for in the Instagram mode? I'll leave the chat open so I can see if you guys have a guess in terms of seconds. So it actually lasts around 60 seconds before that post will then disappear within your thread. And that's why you put hashtags in your post so it can stay um, active or live for a lot longer. Um, in terms of your stories, they last for 24 hours, but in terms of their, like their length, in terms of their ecosystem time, it's about 80 minutes before that story will be flipped um, or pulled down the ranking. That's very good to understand in terms of how the system works in terms of content. But let's go through on how do we set up your Instagram and what do you do to um, make sure that everything's working the right way. Before we get into this, does anyone have any questions on Instagrams like Creative View or um, like how do you set up a business account or anything like that so far? Okay, perfect. So we have the, what's the differences between a creator and a business account? Essentially, there isn't really that much of a big difference. Um, your creator account or your business account is really just a kind of lower funnel um, uh, account where you can set up advertising, you can set up your uh, connections in terms of your SEO efforts. Your creator account um, essentially just gives you more assets on how do you endorse more content and how do you, um, you know, kind of unlock 
new aspects of the Instagram platforms that may not be applicable to anyone. Um, and creator is really, if you think about it, it's more for the, the types of content that want to do guides, for example, or reels. Um, and you have that ecosystem where you would get those insights from Instagram and that would help you set that up. Does that make sense? And then the other question I have here, is it worth setting up a business account if you're just starting out? Yes. So I just launched our Instagram again 10 days ago um, and we, we set up a business account. And the reason why it's really good to have that business account is you get to see the insights in how people interact with your content and that can help you curate better content in the future. Um, when you get over 100 followers, you then get to see those insights and you get to see a lot more um, views on, you know, how many people are just looking at your platform, as well as you get to see like custom audience data. So you know what you need to do next to make everything better. Does that make sense? Perfect. OK, so uh, one more one is what type of um, account do you suggest for bloggers? Um, I would say probably based on that type of question, I would go for business until you get over, let's say, 2,000 followers, and then you can move over to an creator account. Perfect. Okay, so let's go into goals. Oh, wait, there's one more question. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so let's go into some goals. Um, and this is a list that I've curated from clients that have given me this information. Um, but let's go through some of the goals that we I commonly see, which we can't go on to the next slide, brilliant. Okay, so let's go into some goals. Um, so let's pick this. So we have some goals that people have here. Um, and you can pick a couple or you can pick um just sections and work on them one by one but a lot I see within the ecosystem I'm in where people say that they want to get more followers um and they want to um you know like have 10,000 followers on Instagram for example or they would like to uh you know kind of have these metrics so this is all all great but you just need to ensure and this is how I kind of describe it to clients is it if it is you're going to like a concert, for example, and let's just say that you're Beyonce, you want to make sure that everyone is singing the song that you're performing. And if you don't have that kind of ambience from your community or from your followers, then there's not a good fix. So the real core of Instagram is that you should be enjoying yourself and the type of content that you're creating. And you should be creating that content because you would want to see that content and you would want your followers to essentially be ambassadors and you would want them to share that content with people that they love and adore too. So in terms of these areas, you just want to make sure that you're increasing people's happiness and you're increasing people's feelings whilst they're on the application and when they're on the app. So in terms of the follower question, that shouldn't be your main goal. You should be looking at here, increasing engagement and driving more traffic to your website. Um, and that's how you can then have a good ROI on your platform and try and see if there would be a return of investment. And what I mean by that is Instagram, in terms of that return on investment, will not give you that straight away. It does take about five months work to start seeing the traffic coming through. And this is where you'd look at your wider marketing funnel and try and see um, how each platform you're on is complementing each other. So let's say, for example, you do SEO um like are people looking at your website are they then looking at your social media platforms are they then looking at blog content that you might be on and are they bouncing between all three of them to conclude that sale um, and you can look at that in a wider picture and also speak to your sales team and say to them like you know what platforms or what content did they say to you um because i think that can then give you good feedback on what you shouldn't be investing in more um, we also have here, uh, create more social video content. So typically, if you create a lot of video content, it does perform a lot better on Instagram because people can um, understand your personality and connect with you on a deeper level than a static image. Um, 
my recommendation on this, especially with reels coming up, is try and see how quickly you can put together a video concept and you know map it out on paper first and then you, what you can do is put together a 15 second to a 30 second video and trial it and the best way to do that is to do FAQ content so you can answer people's questions um, and you should be able to answer it within five to ten seconds and you can create a Canva uh, template where you could then say like this is the answer or this is the question and create your video content that way. Does anyone have any questions so far? Yes, you can do. So you can change your account later on. Um, you can change your account at any stage. It's just good to understand the reasons why you'd want to change your account. And does anyone have any questions about goals before we move on? Yeah, we're going to talk about Instagram stories later, but do you have any questions on Instagram story goals? Okay, cool. Right, so let's go on to the next section. Auditing your account. So, sorry, let me go back. <laughs> so let's go into auditing your account. Um, and this is where you would look at your account's current performance and see how it would work on that level. Um, and this is two, like kind of a free phrase process. The first bit, um, and this is my recommendation for, for kind of everyone really, is give your account to a family friend or a, um, you know, kind of someone, someone that's close to you. Ask them how they feel about your account and what's their first impression that they see when they look at your profile. Um, and that could be your bio or it could be your actual physical grid. Um, and, and write down the words that they're feeling. So do they feel uplifted or do they feel curious or do they not understand like your goal? Um, and you can then look through how you could then fix that. And we'll go through that more later on. In terms of auditing different areas of your account as well is looking at how many people have engaged with your posts organically, um, how many people have um, saved that content for later on. And also, if you're using hashtags, which hashtags have brought more people to your platforms? Um, and you can see that within your business insights. Um, and we can then go through how hashtags work and how everything kind of fixes itself. But my main tip for auditing this is if you can, um, clear your Instagram cache and a cache is like a, a historical record of what you've been looking at previously um, and this is how the algorithm will deliver content to you. Now how do you clear it? There isn't like a button that you can press where it will just wipe your history. You have to do that yourself and my biggest kind of tip would, would be for yourself is to follow similar accounts that you would like your followers or you believe that your followers would be uh, interacting with. So follow those um, and also then start looking at the posts that you think would be interesting um, and start saving them and you can create a Pinterest mood board um, and look at all these kind of factors like do you know do they do FAQ content or what what content do they do that you particularly like and this is a competitive listening hack so what you'll do is if you do that for three days you will then kind of influence the algorithm to start showing you content related to that and you would see that in your explore section of Instagram and what it will start doing is start showing you content that you believe that your target audience would like to see. And that can help you start thinking of ideas on what content you should be generating and what content or what hashtags you think would be interesting. You can follow hashtags as well. So you can do that within your system and start then really collecting buckets of ideas of content that you should be, or hopefully should be creating. Um, and that's a great way of just tricking the system to kind of help you create more content. Um, so let's go through the planning of your feed. Sorry, there's a question, give me a second. 
Yes, there is. So Elizabeth, what I'll do is I will show you some tools after this where you can find the reach of um, hashtags. You could also as well, when you're on Instagram, um, when you type in a hashtag, you can see how many related posts that has. So it will say like 200,000. And what you can do is click on that hashtag and see the trending posts. And, you know, you can look at each of those posts and see which one would you say would relate. There's also a list of hashtags that you can't use because they're banned by Google or oh, not by Google, by Instagram. So that would be like a hashtag like for like or hashtag follow back. Typically, these are blacklisted because what happened in 2014 was a lot of people on WhatsApp groups would say like I've posted something and a lot of people would come across and like all that content or they would do like like for like and the likes that they would get from that content wouldn't be genuine and what they found is that one person would like it but then you know they would show them a post five days ago from the same account and it wouldn't get the same engagement so typically those hashtags have been banned within the instagram ecosystem is there any other questions on auditing yes we can also find out which hashtags are being used and i'll show you that in the insights perfect Okay, cool. So let's go through some planning of your feeds um, and go through all these kind of areas that you might have struggled with previously. Sorry, two seconds. Yes, I will also send you the list of hashtags that you should never use as well. Um, and I will send you a link to Instagram's list of hashtags that you shouldn't be using. Okay, so the other question we have here is why are poll results not visible for more than 24 hours on these days? Is there a way to get weekly insights and stories and how? Yes, I will take you through how to get those insights and stories um, and how to kind of get the, the metrics back. And you can get that from a business account, um, but you have to kind of dig into the data and kind of find out more. You also have tools like Later and Hype Auditor um, which can help you understand poll results or FAQ questions so you can curate later results. But typically, if you have a public account, they'll only be visible for 24 hours. And as soon as it's 25 hours, you won't be able to see those metrics um, so easily. You just, just have to kind of look further into that content. Any more questions? Nope. Okay, let's go through some of this. So planning your feed. So let's have a look at planning your colour schemes or planning your topics and posts. Um, you know, these are typically some of the questions I got from clients and how everything works in terms of the, the feed and your posting. Now, if you're anything like myself, you kind of, you start off really well and then you procrastinate and you get to, let's say like 60 days um, and you find it probably quite difficult to kind of think of ideas on what to post or curating those posts in terms of your layouts. And that's all down to your structure and how you start off. Um, because everyone, when they get into the Instagram game, um, they start off too aggressively um, and it's typically quite useful or quite used for people to have a burnout um, and to not know what to post anymore because they've kind of lost that spark. So I don't know if people have heard of like the, the Mary Kondo method, but this is where you'd look at your Instagram and look and see really what brings you happiness internally and that's essentially what you should start trying to post more of now in terms of the topics my kind of trick or what I kind of take clients through is let's say you're looking to do Instagram for the first time or you're looking to rebrand or rebrand your Instagram is get yourself a notepad and if you can try and write down as many ideas that you can post about so it might be like meet the team content or it might be industry news or it might be like how do you 
let's say if you're an e-commerce brand, like how do you design a t-shirt or how do you put together um, an OTD? Or you might find inspirational ideas, like you've watched a film from Sex and Cities, for example, um, and you might say like, I want to emulate that outfit, but how do I do that at home? So write down all the ideas that you might have, and that essentially is your content calendar. You also have within the Instagram world, um, like days that you can do. So you have motivational Mondays, you have like uh, throwback Thursdays, for example, um, and you can use that to help you create filler content. But my recommendation would be, is don't to have that as a staple within your content calendar. In terms of motivation as well, especially during the times that we're in, look at how you can turn a quote into something more personal. So what I mean is, can you write that quote down personally and post it up as a image? Um, or can you talk more about that quote for IGTV? Or can you um, turn that quote into a something that means or something that's meaningful for yourself? Because anyone can copy a quote and post it, but what people want to understand is why is that relevant for you and your account? Um, also look at your stock photos and your user experience. So user experience is obviously a big fundamental part of Instagram. And how can you share more of that content? So can you create a like hashtag? So it would be your brand um, and my experience or something like that, that you can track the listening and what people are saying about your brand. Um, and this goes into your social listening portfolio and how you can then find out more about how people are using your products and what they're experiencing in and you can turn that into testimonial content. In terms of colour themes we'll go through this um, in terms of how many times you should post as well this is an interesting aspect so Instagram says that you should post every single day on your Instagram profile and you should post up to five times on stories. Now, in terms of the everyday focus, especially in the ecosystem we're in now, um, that might be too much. And you have to basically test, test the platform to see, like, do you need to post every single day? Or can you post, let's say, on Thursdays, for example, at 5 p.m. and get the same interaction as posting every single day? Sorry, I've got a question. Give me a second. Yeah, so what I would do is I also have a document that I can send you. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, I can send you this document that goes through all of these points so you can go through this on your own. And it's a lot more detailed. Let me show you what the document looks like. Two seconds. So essentially, I don't know if you hang on. Two seconds. So essentially it's a workbook and you can go through each of these points in a lot more detail than I'm going through right now. Um, and you can go through particular questions like your bio, how to set that all up for yourself, as well as like content and aesthetics that we'll go through next. But if you want access to this, just um, give me a DM on Instagram and I'll send you this document so you can go through step by step and curate your own content calendar, um, as well as your brand's bio um, and all of that kind of information. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go through color schemes. Um, so color theory is essentially how does a colour relate to your audience? And what does that colour say to your audience at the end of the day? Now, have you noticed that all social media platforms are blue? And then the reason why they're all blue is because blue is a colour of trust. And when you show blue to a consumer database, they feel a lot more calm and they feel a lot more tranquil with that colour. So always think as well about your branding and your, you know, your outreach and what message that gives to clients and what they will feel like at the end of it um, and we'll go into that in your aesthetic as well um, and how that would help and play and make people feel at the end of the day. So let's go through into the next slide which is your branding and voice. 
Now, this is a main aspect that a lot of clients kind of struggle with is they, they kind of feel that when they set up or start doing something that they, they have to stick with that prerogative. They have to stick with that same ambience. Now, this is all down to your, your clientele at the end of the day. And this is where I really need you to learn about who your audience is. Now, what I mean by that is can you, can you kind of decipher what their age will be? Um, so that will determine how you would talk to them um, and also then look at your location so you know are they mainly based in Abu Dhabi for example or are they mainly based in the UK or are they mainly based in the US um, and that also would answer your grammar and your um, the way that you would physically type your caption so if you look at their age and also their locations, you can determine how best you would then talk to that person. Um, and you'd also then look at your the way that you communicate in terms of uh, the vocabulary that you use. The other area would be the interest. So what interests do they have that are outside that target audience? Now, what I mean by that is let's say you're in the fitness field and you want to talk to someone um, about food, for example. What you would want to do is mind map or mind map what other products, what other topics you think that person might be interested in. So they might be a parent, for example. So how could you intertwine that caring voice into your captions and into your content? Or let's say they're interested into, like, into makeup, for example. So that would also let you across in terms of your branding, like do you need to be uh, fun or spontaneous or can you bring some humour into your chat? Um, this is the kind of forensics area as well of how you would talk to that user. Now, in terms of Instagram as well, if you use emojis within your captions, uh, it kind of gives you an extra point in terms of you um, having better ranking. So in terms of your branding and voice, does that relate to the company feel? You know, if you're a corporate bank, for example, can you use emojis and which emojis can you use that is not going to make your account sound childish? Um, and this is where you would look more at statistics. So in terms of your posts, for example, you might be sharing um, industry news or statistics or you might be sharing meet the team um, and this is where you can intertwine emojis into your content and this is all a trial and error so there is no rule of thumb it's just how when you're when your sales team, for example, meet your clients, what message do they put across and how can you portray that message on Instagram? So let's go into the aesthetic and the look and feel of your Instagram. Um, there's many different ways, and this is really just down to your planning of your content and how do you put content across there. Um, and this is really just down to your own personal preference. Now, I have a lot of clients that like to be like a we are wild and broom, um, where they have a very good cosmetic feel. Now, the issue that there is with that, that type of content is everything has to be planned at least 30 days in advance. Um, and to change something last minute is very difficult to do because it will ruin the aesthetic of the wall. Um, you could have something like Sarah, um, but she's actually kind of complained previously is that she now has to use Lightroom or a tool to now adapt her wall. And she finds it very difficult now to plan future content based on her rainbow effect of her wall. So this is where you'd look at the type of content that you have and how easily it is to curate that content and um, put something up if you had to at last minute. Yeah, and then the rainbow theme looks awesome. If you follow her uh, Instagram at the moment, it's just like the, the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen. But in terms of man hours, for example, Sarah has to spend about three days curating content for this. Um, and that's just 15 days worth of content to put out there. So it's a lot of manpower to curate that. And if you're a one shop band as in like you're one person putting this content across it's something that you wouldn't be able to do straight away and it takes quite a lot of time to 
put that content out there. If you're looking for something to do really quickly, um, you can do a black and white or a color brand theme. You also have, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a really cool tool here called My Insta Palette, where let's just say you, you find a competitor or a competitive account that you really love. If you put their handle into this tool, it will let you know the color scheme that they typically use the most. So you can then go to Canva, for example, and start mapping out your content. You also have um, Polony as well, which you can help um, slot your algorithm grid to see how it would look like at the end of the day. Um, and you can do that on a 15 day or a 30 day aesthetic. Um, so this is the kind of typical rule of thumb, and this is also your colors as well. So if you look at our Sam, she shares a lot of food um, and she uses something called Adobe Lightroom to boost the effects of her photos um, and assets. Um, so this is really your kind of run of the run of the mill um, aesthetic look and feel. But it's really the, the fundamental thing. It's really what message do you want to send? to your clients at the end of the day? What do you want them to feel like when they look at your Instagram? Um, and, you know, it's it's all about as well the, the tonality. So, you know, the what do you want them to click on? What do you want them to see the most attraction? And what, what do you think would make them contact you? And that's the kind of the goal of Instagram is you want people to send you a DM or you want people to visit your website or you want people to collaborate with you if you're an influencer, for example. Um, and this is where you'd look at your end goal and you would look at your insights to try and see, like, are you hitting that, um, that KPI or that goal? Does this make sense? Perfect. Okay, so let's go on to the next term is the terms of community management. Um, and this is a big aspect in terms of the Instagram areas. And these are some six tips that I've kind of put together to kind of help you curate the right content. Um, and, you know, just really make sure that your community or your, your the people that you're talking to um, feel a part of the ecosystem that you put them in. So my first kind of really, really kind of winning kind of point is make it personal um you know the more personal you are with your instagram the more that people would relate to you um and people are really quite worried about showing their real life but the thing is that you've got to understand with instagram is you're just showing 10 seconds of your life on that platform they don't need to see you um you know every second of every day um and you just need to kind of um, let them in a little bit to kind of see like an everyday life uh, view. You also have the ability that you can do some more engagement aspects so you can do more polls and questions to kind of understand what kind of content people want to see or you know would they like to meet more members of your team or would they not like to hear industry news because they come to Instagram for a break and they would actually like to see you know more um, packing videos or more um, like how-to guides um, and they will tell you essentially what they want you to show them and that will help you curate more content. The other aspect that you have as well in terms of how Instagram works and how you can make it better perform for you is if you post please block out 10 minutes um, of time after each post to actively reply, read comments, as well as look for new audiences to bring into your ecosystem. So this is where you would, let's say, earlier on we spoke about following and tricking the algorithm into showing you more content related to your audience this is where you'd go back into explore and you would find related content and you would like and you would also write meaningful comments on that person's wall um, to kind of build these partnerships and build these alliances. Never think of anyone as a direct competitor and try and think of them how you can join forces and maybe hold a live together where you could talk about um, Instagram Reels, for example, or you could talk about um, SEO or, you know, like a topic that you're both familiarly interested in where both of your communities come together and you could, you know, have a, you know, a time or a 30 second update and talk about that. 
Um, the fourth point here is really just having user generated content and, you know, really kind of making sure that your community feels like they're a part of the ecosystem by sharing that content. Always ask for their permission, um, but it just makes them feel proud when they see the photo that you've taken on your wall and you can give people um, rewards for doing that. So you could give them a 50 uh, dirham voucher to, to use within your platform, or you could, you know, give them a session with you so they could, you know, really kind of feel a part of that ecosystem. And this works into creative ways of giving back. Um, so, you know, you can always look at those different aspects and try and see how you can connect with people on a more face-to-face -face, uh, aspect. Hashtags. So let's talk about hashtags. So if you have hashtags within your post, um, it just helps people find your content more. Um, and th this is some rules really to kind of go by is you can use up to 30 hashtags on a post. I have a lot of questions from clients saying, would you, do you put them in the bio? Do you put them as a first comment? Um, in terms of the cleanness and how it looks, I would say put it in your bio, uh, like your first comment. Um, and what you can do is trick the Instagram algorithm into thinking that your post has more engagement by doing that like sneaky hack. Um, and it also keeps the post looking clean. You don't have to use 30. Um, I would probably say stick between the 10 to 15 bandwidth, um, but always swap out your hashtags for each post. And then you can see which hashtag is bringing more people to your page. And we'll go through that in the next slide. Yeah, so a lot of people are using the hash, a lot of people essentially are flooding that hashtag um, and they're not reaching as many people due to the usage that people are using at the moment. So since the kind of corona kind of happened essentially, um, people have been using Instagram a lot more and they've typically been on Instagram, let's say, seven to eight hours a day, uh, which means that you know, essentially you need to kind of post a lot more and you need to put those hashtags into stories or you need to kind of look at similar hashtags to get the same exposure. So a hashtag is essentially, if you imagine it like a library, it's like um, a how do you find content or how do you um, index or categorize that content further. Um, in terms of the hashtag, I will show you what that is in the next slide, um, but it's just furthering your reach um, of your content by using particular words, which um, creates like a web or creates a feel so people can find out more. Okay, so let's go into insights. Um, so within business, the business accounts, you get to see your insights um, and you get to then see a lot more detail once 100 people have followed you. Um, now, this is just a kind of straight off the bat um, numbers that you get to see. Um, so you see here when you start off, you see your soft KPIs, which is likes, comments and saves. You also have this little envelope which means that they've sent that content to someone else um, and it's it's gone into a DM. So DM is direct message. Um, you also have here um, profile visits and reach. So reach means it's how many people that content has reached to and it doesn't typically mean that they've seen the content. It just means that it's got to that person's phone or their device um, and you can kind of see those those areas here. You have interactions which means how many people have visited your profile so they've seen your post they've read your caption that's the same and they've clicked and they're actually then gone into your grid format. Now this is a really cool metric because you get to see if you think of it like a sales funnel like where they are in the process. So have they turned into a follower? Have they looked at your profile in terms of, you know, to find out more about you? Um, and then you get to see some numbers down here. So reach again, which is a duplication number. Um, and the, what you then get to see is how many people actually weren't following you. Um, and you then get to look at these numbers more. So if you look down here, you see your impressions are broken down by, like type of product. 
So from the profile, from home, from the hashtags and from other. So from other might be that printed print it, uh, pin interest hack that I told you about, but you might have your hashtags. This is where I would say use different hashtags. So then you could see, would that bring more people to your platform? Um, and has that, you know, kind of attracted people that you didn't know about? Um, you were then within your business account um, can let's say advertise to people that have engaged with your Instagram profile um, and you can then kind of turn those people into clients let's say um, but if you drill into these numbers a lot more you can then look and see how many times you need to post um, and it also gives you uh, like your best performing days um, your best performing hours in terms of content as well it lets you know you know if you filter into the system um, the content that's brought the most followers or the content that's brought the most click to calls um, and that can help you decide what content to create in the future this is a summary um, of everything that we discussed and as I said there's a workbook so if you want access to that please just drop me a dm um, and I'll share that with you so you can go through step by step of everything that we've just discussed right now um, and this is just a kind of summary of everything that we've gone through so hashtag shouldn't be overused um, make sure you get permission of people's content um, and that's it any questions Sure, I'll drop this in the comments. Okay, so one person says they're struggling with later. Um, none of the links I add in link bio ever change in my bio. So have a look at Linktree. Um, that can help you have more control over your links and you can actually see who's accessed those links and how much traffic that's come from. So have a look at that. So I got a question here, like what do you say about groups that follow and like um, uh, mantra and comment of everyone? Essentially, a lot of the your core audience can see that those are all fake. Um, and what I mean by that is they will not read, like they will not write meaningful comments. They will typically leave emojis like heart emojis or flower emojis. Um, and you know, when people are actually judging a profile in terms of them following your platform, um, they can just tell straight away that they're not authentic. And the reason why is because typically you as a consumer or you as the user, you you don't like and engage with that content so you know people can see that you're just ignoring those comments um, and they will just assume that they're bots in terms of the audit as well i always recommend that every quarter you go through and move these bots uh, accounts you remove accounts that don't have images or don't have um that they haven't posted anything because typically they're not going to bring you any assets um, you know, I don't work with any clients that have bought followers because it's so difficult to clean up, um, you know, the, the mistakes that are done. It's a lot easier to start at Instagram from scratch without actually buying followers, because if you're looking to get verified, if you bought followers, that will most likely not happen because, you know, Instagram will vet your platforms. And if it sees that, let's say one day you had 60, 60 followers and then you've gone up to 2000, they will see that jump. You also have some other platforms that you can look at to see uh, trends. And I can send that to you where you can see you know, the natural growth and you want to make sure that it's authentic. Okay, everyone. Well, I think that's the, the end of this session. Okay, so what's the best time to post? If you look at your, your data or if you look at your industry, this is where you'd go into your audience profile. And let's say you, you will say that they're a, a man, for example, and that they're 45. Um, you will then look really at their everyday life, you would assume. 
um, and try and anticipate when they would be at home or when they would be looking for Instagram. And that's when you would look to post. And this is where you would then test it internally to say, if I post at 7 p.m., for example, do I get more likes um, at that time or do, should I post at like 10, at 10 a.m. or 12 p.m.? Um, and then you can kind of look at when the best time is to then work on your posting strategy. The other question that you have is later or plainly? I would go for later just because it's a lot um, easier to work with in terms of your device. Um, but you can you can go with the other option. Um, it's just based on uh, the level of content that you're going to be putting out there as well and how many counts that you're going to be working on in terms of your connections there. All right, everyone. I think that's it in terms of our questions. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for joining today's session. I'm sorry that we were running late. And if you do have any questions, feel free to give me a follow and I'll help you as best as I can to go through any of those points. But thank you so much for joining and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, bye everybody.